good morning. I think it's time to begin. I'd like to welcome everyone. It's uh, August 1st, believe it or not. So summer's clipping along and it won't be long and we'll be making plans for turkey. Um, anyway, it's good to see everyone this morning. Uh, we're continuing our kind of summer series where we've rotated through uh, various individuals who've, who have taught uh, for a few weeks here and there, and uh, that's, that'll come to a close this month. So we'll go through this month, and then uh, Doug will be uh, teaching the Minor Prophets uh, here on Sunday morning, uh, starting in September. Um, so we're looking forward to that as well. Um, before we get started, let's go ahead and um, have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for all the many things that you do for us and for this time that we have together. Thank you for the safe travel that we've had, for the health that we have uh, to be able to uh, be here this morning. We'd ask that you would uh, be with all of the teachers uh, this morning is uh, they teach your word. And we thank you uh, for them. We ask that you would be with each of us as we uh, listen and, and participate, Father, that we might have a better understanding of how you would have us live our lives. We're mindful, Father, of all those who uh, have physical needs and ailments and that you might continue to watch over them. And we're grateful and thankful, Father, for those that you've helped. And we'd ask that you would uh, be with us now, uh, be with uh, the church worldwide as it, it worships you today, and uh, we pray, Father, that um, you would receive all the glory and honor um, that, that you are due uh, on this day today, and it's in your son's name that we pray, amen. Okay, um, if you would, turn to Psalm 46. Psalm 46, and someone read verses 9 and 10. Psalm 46, 9 and 10. Thank you. So verse 10 is a verse that we've heard a lot. Um, if you've been in the church or you study the Psalms, you've probably, it's probably stuck out to you at times. What does be still and know that I am God, what does that mean to you? Okay, so to clear, clear your mind of what's going on in the world and focus on God. Other thoughts? Reverence. Reverence, silence, and patience. Reverence, silence, patience. What does that do for us? So there's, in this verse, there's two components that he's talking about. What's the first one that he says? First two words, verse 10. Be to be still. Now, how, how many times as a child did we hear those two words? All right? Be still. All right? Or stop. Or sit down. Yeah. Thousands and thousands, maybe. Is it hard to be still? Is it just a, a, a child issue? Not for me. 
Why is it hard to be still even as an adult? And what do we mean by being still? You know, when we talk about kids, it's usually because they're bouncing off the walls uh, in some way physically. Is that what we're talking about here with, with adults or with you? Or is, is it hard to be still? And what does being still look like to you? Okay, giving time, patience. Well, part of it is physical. Because, yeah, to sit down and be still. Okay. Part of it is also has to do with your attitude. You know, be mentally prepared to be still and listen to what God has to say. Okay. Staying focused. I'm sorry? Staying focused. Staying focused. Okay. So there's a slowing down physically and mentally. Right? It's, it's just, and it's, is it not hard to shut off a little bit? I mean, it is hard for me to slow down. Sometimes physically, I can slow down and, you know, Sandy, Matthew, others, you know, they laugh at me because, I mean, I'll fall asleep in my chair or something, right? I mean, sometimes I just pass out. Like my body says, you're done for a little bit, okay? Um, but mentally... Right? You, you can just be sitting there. Are you, when you're laying in bed, are you still? But how many of you are your minds just zooming? Yeah. I mean, between the TV, the radio, I mean, I'm bad at that. I like noise. You know, yesterday I'm out working and doing stuff. I got a radio on. Sometimes I'm still with my thoughts. Sometimes I just, you know, you want to be stimulated and things are just going. You want to hear music. You want to do whatever it might be. Because he says, be still, why? To what? To know that I am God. To prepare. You know, be still and know that I am God. And what we want to look at for three weeks is kind of this verse and what it means, but really expand it out. That, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it, there's, a, there's a, a part here of being still and know that I am God. What's, what's implicit in that? What's he saying? He's in, control. he's in control, and he's also saying, if you slow down and you consider things around you, you will know that I am God. You will see what's happening. That's right. Look at advice that Job got from one of his friends. Turn to Job 37, 14. Job 37, 14 says what? Listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Yeah. Listen, Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Just meditate, think about that. Consider the wondrous works of God. I want us to turn to Romans 1. Romans 1, 16 through 21. Can someone read that for me. Romans 1, 16 through 21.
because that which is made to be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Okay, thank you. All right. So here's, here's what we're going to do for three weeks. I don't know if you've ever wondered, you know, yeah, I believe there's God. Do I know there's God? I don't know if you've ever thought, boy, I wish, you know, I could have been there when there were miracles and, you know, you could see the miracles that are happening and, and wouldn't that be cool? And, and they did the miracles to confirm their power and God's power and Boy, if I, could, if I could see that, if I knew that Christ had raised from the dead, if, you know, why, why didn't God make it even more obvious? Why didn't he make it more obvious? Why didn't he just, where it's just crystal clear that he's God and that he exists? And what I want to suggest for the next three weeks and go through and show a little bit is he's made it crystal clear we have to slow down and think about it. And we have to suspend and hold what the world feeds and just be still and think about it. Take a look. Just, just think about it for a minute. Right? Sometimes we're like those kids, right? For those of you who've had kids or have kids, isn't it amazing? You know, sometimes you'll hear the phrase about money. What, do you think it grows what? On trees? Like, do you have any concept how all this works? Like, where do you think this electricity comes from? Like, where do you think the water comes from? Like, how do you, do you think the food, do you think it just magically appears in the refrigerator? Right, do you, do you think that you know, all these things just happen by accident that clothes show up in your dresser. And kids, what, they're so busy in their own world that they literally don't give any thought to any of that. Sometimes it's not until, what, we leave home or people leave home and they have to do for themselves that it actually dawns on them, wow, mom and dad did a lot. Is that not how we go through the world? Do, you, do we actually think that the sun rises just because? Do we think that the earth is the right distance from everything? Do we, do we think that you know, we live a certain age just because? Do we think that we are young and get old just because? What are all the messages in this? Do you think that it's, that it's by coincidence that 85% of the world's population has a faith? What, is, what, what are these people doing? What are they seeking? What drives them to believe in something? Is it coincidence that we're so drawn to music and to singing? That there's music on every commercial, there's music in everything. That we're so musically driven? Or is that just coincidence and, and accident? We're going through life like a nine year old. And we don't always slow down and think about there's design to all this. There's, there's purpose to everything. There's a reason why I'm in time. There's a reason why I get old. There's a reason why God has children and has us have children. There's a reason to a lot of these things if we just slow down and think about it. And that's what I want us to do. And I want us to look at Romans 1 that was just read, but Tori... Romans 1.16, of 
course, we know here Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Right? And in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The judge shall live by faith. He's saying you know, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's, it's fantastic. It will save us. It's, it's the spiritual food that we need. But then he turns in verse 18 to says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? All ungodliness and what? And unrighteous, the unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. Now, God has shown them righteousness and they've chosen unrighteousness. But how, how did he show it to them? Look at verse 20. For how long? Since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. And we're going to study those this morning. I want us to think about what, what is God trying to achieve? Like, what's the purpose of all this? Why? What, what's the purpose of his creation? What's the purpose of man? What is he, what is he getting out of this? And to, to know that and know why he has created things the way he has is to understand his attributes. Because he's trying to satisfy those things. His invisible attributes are clearly seen. How? How are they understood? How can you understand what God is trying to accomplish? It, by the things that are made. By the things that are around. There's clues everywhere. There's clues in our lives. There's clues in our bodies. There's clues in how he made everything as to what he's trying to accomplish. Right? His invisible attributes are clearly seen. If what? If you slow down. If you, if you be still and you look and you listen. Being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power in Godhead, so that what? They are without excuse. Who's without excuse? The people who are unrighteous that he was just talking about. Those people, those people are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Okay? He is saying it can be clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Right? We, we have to look, and we have to consider. So I want us to look, and I want us to consider, and there's going to be a lot of things raised in this class that I don't have full answers for, but you can, you can think about a lot of different things. So, what does God get out of his creation? So, why create anything? Th think of yourself. Right? Part of this question that I'm going to ask you is, if you were God, if you were God, how would you have done it? So you think about if you were God with his attributes, which we'll talk about in a moment. But if you had God's attributes, how would you have created the world? How would, how would you have created us? You know, you can say, well, man's time's about 80 years. You know, some are 100, some live 60, some what. You know, but why, why, get, why get old? Maybe you just create where we live 80 years like a, and we look like a 25-year-old. And we feel like a 25-year-old for 80 years and then you die. Why, why not do it that way? Right? You want to say something? In 21, 
because they knew God, they did not glorify him. And it was more that they became futile is, is like weak or um, vain, empty. That, that their, their thinking isn't with wisdom. It's just, uh, and it says their foolish hearts were darkened. They, they've shut their mind down. Their thoughts aren't substantial. Right? So he's just saying, uh, because although they knew God, they didn't glorify him as God. They were not thankful. They didn't put the weight into thinking about God as they should have. So then, therefore, their thoughts were vain. They were empty. They were weak. They were futile. Right? So let's go back to the question then. So what does God get out of all this? Let's, let's think about what is, he, what is he trying to achieve with his creation? A reminder. I mean, I think we require a visual reminder for that same reason that the verse says. I mean, if we don't, you know, if humans are a breed, if it's not right in front of us, it's never right when they're gone. So I think having a visual reminder of the same with age and then they just age forever. So, so hang on to that. That's, that's right. We're going to come to that. Think about, go ahead, Jody, you want to say something? Okay, so I think you're. I think that's basically right. What's in my note? So that's where we're going. But I want to ask the question again and make sure everyone gets it. Right. So we can answer this a couple of times. So what? What does God? What does God get out of the creation? What? What does He want? So He's He's there. He's eternal. There was a time where there was no earth. There weren't animals, there wasn't man, there wasn't woman, right? There wasn't an atmosphere, there wasn't sea, there weren't the stars. God was eternal, and at some point he created time, and he created in the beginning, right, where he created time and a space for that. What's, what's he, you know, he decided he wants something. He wants praise. He wants a relationship. He wants love, right? He, we're told in John 4, turn there, John 4, 23 and 24 says what? John, 3, John 4, 23 and 24. He wants worship. He wants worship. Yeah, can you want to read that? John 4, 23 and 24. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Okay. Verse 23 tells us that the Father is what? He's spirit. And he's seeking what? People to worship him in their spirit and truth. Right? We've talked about before, we've asked the question, are you a spirit with a body or a body with a spirit? How do you see yourself? Right? And we're... We're a spirit with a body. If you think of yourself as a body and you happen to have a spirit, you get the focus on the wrong thing. God is what? Spirit. And he wants spirit worship. He doesn't care about this. Okay, I know I've got good, good hair going today. But he doesn't really care about it. Okay. 
He doesn't, he doesn't care about all this. We get hung up on this. We'll talk about that. So why did he make us? Why did he make some of us tall and some of us short and some of us bald and some of us with beautiful hair and some of us with this color skin or that color skin or this weight or that weight or whatever? Why did he do that? Well, we can talk about that. But he's focused on the spirit. Okay? Maybe that's part of the test. Do we see spirit or do we see all this? If a rich man comes into your assembly and you run him right up to the front and give him the best seat and all right? What's the lesson he's trying to teach us? The things that we see. He's telling us the answers. But he wants worship. He wants praise. Right? Look at Romans 1.24. What's Romans one twenty four say? Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness to the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Okay. So God will give us up, right, to our own lusts if we want to worship. Um and, and read verse twenty five. I meant that too, I didn't So what's verse 25 telling us? That we that man can actually do what if they're not careful? We might worship and serve, but we might worship and serve what? The creature. The created more than who? The creator. So back to one of the things that what we're going to come up to in a minute that Jody said is he wants choice. He's giving us the ability to choose. So if you're God and you're thinking, I want worship. I am due worship. I am due praise. He creates a situation with free choice. Why is the free choice important? We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, but hold on to that. And think about why is free choice important? Think about who you want to be worshipped or praised. You know, not in the same way as God, but you understand what I mean. Like if you're going to be appreciated or you're going to be, right, is there value in being chosen God wants to be chosen. So then how does he do that? How does he set that up? How do, you, how do you make that happen and set it up where you can be chosen or not chosen? And so he will give us up to uncleanliness. That's part of his character. Today I want us to think about the character of God. What is he looking for? What is he wanting out of all this? Then we can look at things around and say, that's why. Because that's what he wants. That's what he's looking for. Well, that makes sense as to why he would create it that way. Right? He's creating things the way that he, he created things the way that he did because he's looking for worship. He's looking for praise. He's looking for glory. You can think, wow, well, you know, and this is what some in the world say. I mean, this is some egotistical God you've got here. He's God. Right? I mean, he's, he's, he's God. He's all-powerful. I mean, you have to go back to, I mean, he's worthy. You don't think he's worthy? Like, just, how did all this come from Nothing from nothing. Think of the power. You want to know why humans fell to their knees when they saw an angel? It's an angel. I mean, they dropped to the ground. But the power. I mean, if we think about God, we have no problem worshiping. I mean, this is God. This is the same God that protects us. This is the same God that provides for us. If we don't forget and we just think we're living in this house and everything works by being automatic. It's not automatic. There's a plan. 
And so when you think about that, then it's like he is worthy. He is righteous. He is just. Who's going to question the justice of God? And he says, he'll give us up to uncleanliness, to our lusts. If we want to worship the create the creature, if we want to worship the things around us, the things we've created, if we want to worship idols, if we want to worship cars, or we want to worship whatever it might be, or our idols, or our sports heroes, he'll let us do that. Like, seriously, you're going to worship sports heroes? Do you get what's going on here? And if you don't, be still. See how the cycle of things and how it works. Look at all the clues he's given you about what's important in this life, in this time you have. Is a spirit. This is your time to choose. This is your time to figure it out. And it can be clearly seen if we slow down. Okay? We don't have enough attention span that we're so wired now. I mean, we can't watch a commercial for more than, you know, I get on YouTube, okay, and it says, hey, the thing you want to see is going to start in nine seconds, or you can skip. If I can't wait nine seconds, okay, now actually I'm not interested in what it is, but I don't want to wait nine seconds. So after four seconds, I'm pushing skip. Because I don't, I don't have an extra four seconds. I like the word, one aspect of being still is to wait. To wait. We wait on God. We do wait on God. Sometimes what we want, what he wants, are two different things. That's right. And so he wants to be worshipped. How long does God want to be worshipped? Who said? For, for eternity. Like this isn't, this isn't it. He, he deserves to be praised. He deserves to be worshipped forever. Forever, right? Look at Revelation 4, 1 through 11. It must just be me, but man, it feels warm in here. Whew. Maybe you can turn this one on. I know I'm a little animated this morning, but I'm not usually this warm. All right, it says 75 over here. I don't know. All right, Revelation, what did I say? Who was paying attention? Revelation 4, I'll, I'll, I'll read this. It's a little long. Just let me read this kind of quick. But, but listen, listen to the worship. Listen to what God deserves. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. At the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones. And on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their head, and from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third like the face of a man, had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes within and without, 
And they did not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him, who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for You created all things, and by Your will they exist and were created. Forever. God is due glory and honor, right? We sing that song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We sing that here. He wants to be worshipped. We know that um, let me ask this question. God wants to be worshipped and praised eternally. But God created time. Why not just create beings and just skip this step? Why not create what? Why not create beings, whether they're humans or angels or whatever it is, and just skip this step of time. Why why create time? Why create a moment that has a beginning and an end? In the beginning. And there will be an end where it all burns up, we're told. Why what does that serve? What's the purpose of this? And Jody, you alluded to it early, consciously or unconsciously. Remember what he wants. He wants a relationship. As much as this might seem, and well, we've got some verses coming, he has no interest in those who have no interest in him. Right? At the end of the day, he wants worship and praise and to be served by those who want to worship and praise him. Not those who are compelled by a greater power, by his power. I mean, Jesus said, you know, I can make the rocks praise me if I want. Right? I can have these rocks cry out to me. Is that satisfying to God? He wants, he wants the spirit. He wants the heart. Right? So how do you, how do you set that up? How do you do that? There's a period of time. We're going to get to a verse that he says, I'm not doing this forever. He says, this whole earth thing, I'm not doing it forever. There, there's, there's, this is going to come to an end. He says, it grieves me. Because, think about this. 
He values the love. He values the worship. He values the relationship so much that when you give choice, what does that mean? Someone's going to choose no. So as much pleasure as he gets out of worship and out of that relationship and out of love, he is risking the pain. Because some will say no. Some won't slow down. Some will enjoy all of his benefits because it rains on who? The just and the unjust. And the unjust are there, and they're taking in the sunshine, and they're taking in all of God's benefits, and the benefits maybe of a Christian society. And there are benefits of living in a Christian society even if everyone doesn't do it. And they think it was all by chance. It just happened. And it, it pains God. That's right. So, and we'll, we'll come into that. So, <clears throat> in Joshua 24, 14 through 18, and I'm not going to read it for time, but Joshua at one point says, choose what? Choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose. You have to choose. You either serve God or you don't. And the people ended up saying, we choose God. But choose. That's what this is about. He wants to know, at the end of the day, he wants the elite. He wants those who, who have accepted his son. We don't have to be elite in the sense that we're better. But he wants those who step up, those who sacrifice, those who focus on the right things that focus on him, that's who he wants to be with for eternity. It's the best of the best. It's not the best of the best in the world's view of what's best. It's the spiritual. It's those who are after the fruits of the Spirit. And as we fail over and over and over and over, that's okay because when he looks at you and all of your failings, whose face does he see? Christ. He, says, he sees his purity. He doesn't see your failings. And that's what he does for us. He wants those people who strive after him and who fail and get up and strive after him because we know his value. And we have a relationship with him and we understand what works. And when we do that, it brings him pleasure to walk with him. He wants to take care of us. For those who rebel, for those who are lukewarm, what are we told? I don't have, I don't, I don't have time. Right? You've made your choice. And I'm going to gather those together with me, my, my children, the ones who love me, the ones who prioritize me, I'm going to gather them together. And forever and ever, I will take care of them. Forever and ever. There will be no sickness. The stuff that you put, and we'll talk about why sickness. Would you create, if you were going to do it, would you create where we could get sick? Right. But no sickness, no sorrow, no watching loved ones die. Why? Why watch that? What's the purpose of that? Right. God loves us. Right. And it's important that we slow down, that we be still and think about what's right in front of us. He's telling us that evidence is clearly seen. We're without excuse. If we're not sure, we're just too busy. We need
need to slow down and look at the evidence that's around us, and we'll do that. We'll pick this up. Um, we'll start next week. We're going to look at a lot of questions. You're going to have to do some thinking next week. And we'll go through some of those next week.